What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with the review for Life After the Lockup, aka Love After the Lockup, aka Life After the Lockup. This episode, this is season two, episode 50. I know for the next season of Love After the Lockup and Life After the Lockup, we better be on season three and season four, because season two, episode 50, is just irritating the shit to me. This episode is titled, Who's Cheating on Who? So, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into this episode review, because it was a good one. All right, you guys. <laughs> so, I'm going to say some of the best for last. So, first up, we're going to talk about Marcelino and Brittany. So, we see Brittany, and she's meeting up with her ex-girlfriend, Amanda, and they're outside of, they're on the side of the road by the prison, and Amanda's like, um... Why are we here? We're not inmates anymore. I've seen the same thing. Like, why are y'all on the side of the road, like by the prison? And I, I, I remembered that I forgot about Sasha being there, but still, again, I'm, 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 I, yeah, no, this would be a no for me. I wouldn't be outside of the prison. I would never want to set foot in that prison. I would never want to be in fifty feet of that prison, a hundred feet, any kind of feet of that prison. So then, you know, Brittany goes ahead and tells uh, Amanda about the situation with Marcelino that you know Marcelino. Came home the night before, he lied to her about where he was, and then, you know, she's talking about the fact that he told her that, you know, he lost the money in the poker game, and me and um, Amanda said the same thing that Brittany's thinking. He didn't have any reason to lie. He could have just said, hey, you know what, lost money in the poker tournament, and, you know, it is what it is. It ain't what it is, what it is. Lost the money. I'm going to do everything I can to, you know, recoup the money somehow, some way, somehow. You know, if I got to sell blood, you know, do something, recoup the money. But instead, he lied to her about what he did. And, you know, she tells her that he went to see the poker, um, the poker instructor, whatever you want to call it. And then, you know, we also find out that Br the reason why Brittany f is flipping out the way that she did is because her dad had a gambling addiction as well to blackjack. So every Friday he would get paid. He would go to the casino and, you know, he ended up having to move out of Vegas and had to move to Alaska because that addiction got too bad. You know, he got to the point where he wouldn't pay bills and stuff like that. So, Brittany just doesn't want to go down that same rabbit hole that she went with her dad. And I understand that. You don't want to be homeless. You don't want to be destitute. So, I definitely get that aspect. Um, do I agree with the fact that Brittany hit Marcin in the last week, last week's episode? Do not. So, then... um. We do see Marcelino and Brittany. They're at home. They're outside, you know, by a fire. And, you know, Marcelino's just telling Brittany he didn't agree with her hitting him. I 100% agree with that as well. And he's because he said it wasn't necessary. But she said, but you lied to me. True. He lied to you, but you didn't have to put your hands on him. Like, that was uncalled for. And, you know, he apologizes to her for the situation. And they let it be. So let's move on to the next couple. All right, you guys, so this one right here, this, this one literally broke my heart watching this scene. So we saw Clint. He went back to the crib. You guys remember last week's episode, Clint could not get into the house. I was thinking to myself, so he doesn't have a key to the house? Did he leave the door unlocked when he left? Like, you know what, Tracy took the car, so she had the keys. Damn, I want to left my, I'm sorry, I just want to left my house with my door unlocked. I don't care what kind of neighborhood you live in, and these, in this day and age, you just don't do that. Um, so when he does, he, so what happened is he did get a text message from Tracy letting him know that she was at the house. So he got there. When she opened the door, I looked at Tracy. I was like, oh my God, Tracy looked like she was strung out on, on, on meth and crack. Like she just looked strung out. You know, her hair was not done. Her, her, her eye, her face, her face just looked horrible. I was like, man, like, I just really want Tracy to get the help that she desperately needs. And I'm not laughing, but I just, you know, I, I just desperately want to get the help that she needs because there's something wrong with Tracy. There's a reason that Tracy goes to these drugs. There's 100% a reason. I don't know if she, I don't know if Tracy's not ready to say what that reason is or if she's, you know, she's at that point in her life. Because if she goes to rehab, she's going to eventually have to open up about whatever traumatic events in her life has happened to make her feel like she has to turn to drugs. And I, I just really, my heart my heart breaks for Tracy completely. Now, do, do, um, like I've said before in previous reviews, Clint needs help as well because Clint is on some drugs as well. You cannot tell me that Clint and Tracy are not doing the drugs together. And, I, and again, I'm going to preference this by saying I don't believe that Clint and Tracy 
they may love each other, but I don't think that they are a match for each other. They have their own demons, and two people with demons should not be in a relationship with each other. It's just my personal opinion. I feel like, you know, yes, granted, they might love each other, but does their love outweigh their demons and outweigh their drugs and, you know, whatever else they got going on? Does the love outweigh that? And from my vantage point, I don't think it does. So I was so confused at Clint because Clint went on a spree of. I'm like, why is he punching himself? Like, I didn't understand that. Like, I mean, and he was hitting himself harder than what I just hit myself. I was barely touching myself. But Clint was just punching himself. I'm like, why are you punching yourself? That that made absolutely no sense. Another thing that about Tracy that broke my heart was when she said that she called herself a psychotic bitch. And, you know, she says um, she's been doing so much drugs. Tracy, we obviously see that. But like I said, again, I just want for Tracy to get the help that she needs. That's all I wanted. So Clint calls his mom, Alice. Alice is trying to calm Clint down. And then, you know, Tracy's just, you know, egging him on. And, you know, once he hangs up the phone with his mom, she says, where's my, where's my baby's picture? I was like, your baby's picture? He said, the sonogram? He, she said, yes. He says, it's still over there. I didn't touch it. She says, yes, you did. You threw it away. And then they drop a bombshell on us that Tracy was actually pregnant and she had an abortion. And I'm like, oh, that's one reason why she's turned to the drugs, the abortion. She hasn't, for, she can't forgive herself for having an abortion, but, oh God. I don't know what to say about that one. Like, oh, I don't think that Clint and Trace are in a good, a good space to raise a child. I don't think Tracy's healthy enough to carry a child to the full term. Yeah, that's, I, I don't think that they're financially stable. They might not be financially stable. Definitely not financially stable because Clint still depends on his parents. Tracy's not emotionally stable to carry a baby, and she's not, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. So, oh, God, I just don't, I don't know what to say in that situation. I really don't. God, I can't, because, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel you should. Okay, so let me think about what I'm trying to say. When it comes down to abortion, I have no, I have no issues with it. I don't agree. It's not something that I necessarily 100% agree with. But it's not something that I'm necessarily against. You know what I'm saying? I feel like women have the right to do whatever they want with their bodies. If they decide to have an abortion, that's on you. You know, you have to... And I'm going to actually tell you guys, I'm not going to divulge too much information. But um, this was when I was in college. My best friend, she was pregnant. And I'm not going to say her name. I'm not just, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. So my best friend was in college. This is our second year of college, I believe. We were sophomores in college. Her, the father of her, she was having twins. Um, so the father, she got, the father was away in college as well. He was at, in a different state than where we are. And, you know, she told me she was pregnant. She asked me, what should she do? I told her, you know, you got to make that decision for yourself. I said, whatever you decide to do. Because she told me, she's like, I'm thinking about having an abortion. She says, well, what do you think I should do? And I told her, you know, my opinion. I said, you know, that's not something that I necessarily 100% agree with. I don't, you know, I feel like, you know, you, 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 you know, you laid down, you had sex without a condom, you weren't on birth control. And I, I didn't judge her. I never did judge her. Still don't judge her to this day because she doesn't judge me for a lot of stuff that I do. So that's our friendship. But I just told her, like, you know, if that's what you want to do, by all means, you got to live with, you got to make that choice for yourself and, you know, you got to be able to live with it. And I told her, but you know what, at the end of the day, you're my best friend. I love you and I support you no matter what you do. If you decide to keep the, if you decide to keep the babies, you got my support. I'm, I'm going to help you as best as I can. You know, we were in college. We were both broke. I told her, you know, you got my support no matter what. If you decide to have the kids, I'm right there by you. I'm right there with you, whatever you need got you we're family and then you know i said if you have the abortion well, once again you're my best friend i love you i support you if that's what you want to do 
I'm going I'm to cheer you on. Like, whatever you want to do, I'm going to be there to support you. And I was the whole way. She decided to have the abortion. And I told her, you know what? That's what? If that's what we're doing, that's what we're doing. Like, I got you. Like, I'm not going to. She's like, so you don't look at me any differently? I said, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. She asked me that I look at her any differently. I said, no. I don't look at you any differently. you still my best friend. You st I still love you. It is what it is. Like, and then, you know, she had some regrets after. She was like, what if, I never, what if I'm not able to have kids? And I told her, don't think like that. I said, I know you see that a lot in certain cases, but I'm like, that's very rare that you see that happen. So, you know, I supported her. But, and much to say with Clinton Trace, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not knocking them. I don't think that they were, and I still don't think now that they're in a good space to have kids. But, you know, it just, it's heartbreaking to see that. Because, you know, it looks like Tracy actually wanted to have the baby. But if you guys are not in a good headspace or any space to have kids, then do what's best for the kids. If you want to have the abortion, have the abortion. If you want to carry the baby to term and give the baby up for adoption, do that. I'm okay with that. The one thing that I'm not okay with, and it's not anything to do with the women, it's these people who feel that they have the right to tell a woman what she can do with her body. Like, there are times, like, and I was telling somebody, I'm like, what if a woman gets raped and she gets pregnant? She's supposed to carry that baby to term? Like, that's, like, I, I, I'm, I don't know if I would be able to do it if I was a woman and got raped. I don't know if I would be able to carry a baby to term that I didn't want myself. So, you know, I don't, that, that's, that's the one thing. And by my job, there's a Planned Parenthood. And I always see people outside of the Planned Parenthood protesting. Like, y'all do realize that Planned Parenthood is more than just abortion, right? Dumbasses. So, you know, I don't feel that anybody should tell the woman what to do with her body. <clears throat> At all. That is her decision. And then, you know, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but I am. You know, there are people, people are more concerned about a fetus than they are to act. So you see women who have babies, leave the babies on the side of the road, in dumpsters, whatever, and they go into the system and y'all don't give a fuck about them, but y'all care so much about them before they get here. But once they get here, oh, that ain't our business. That ain't our problem. The fuck? Let's move on because I don't want to go any deeper. So next up is Lacey, Shana. And John. So Lacey, like, literally has no self-respect for herself. Because we see Lacey, and Lacey is in the car with John. And, you know, she is just, you know, reevaluating her relationship with Shane after finding out that he cheated on her. And, you know, I've been feeling really disappointed lately. <laughs> so, you know... You know, Jean and I haven't had sex with each other, you know, at all. Like, we TV, like, we really should not bring Lacey back for another season because I think the viewers are really sick of Lacey because she's very annoying. I don't want to call her out of her name, but she's a three-letter word, and I'm not going to say it. You guys can read between the lines. I'm pretty sure you can, right? Yeah. So, you know, she's texting and John wants to look at her phone. So, you know, I'm texting my dad because he has the kids. So, uh, like, why are you doing this to me? She did. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, John is talking to her about, like, you know, you need to keep him out of the house. I'm like, John, why are you running after her? God, she left you for Shane. I, 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 Lacey must have some magical puss. Just got to put it out there. Must have the magical puss. Because I just don't understand why he's going back and forth with her. Because they started arguing. <laughs> like, why are you doing this to me? Like, I don't, like, I don't want to sleep with John before I, you know, end my marriage with Shane. So then we do see Lacey. She goes home and Shane is there and he's playing the PlayStation. And Shane actually should have hopped in the shower because Shane lifted his arms. And if you looked up under his armpits, you saw sweat stains. So yeah, Shane, you definitely should have took a shower before, you know, the cameras came in. But 
that's neither here nor there. You know, anytime I do Lacey, Shane, and Jean, I'm just gonna talk like Lacey the entire time. So, you know, she's very annoying. Oh my god, you're phony. Touche. I was always honest with you about, sh you know, my relationship with Jean. Always open with you about that relationship. Like, literally, no, you were not open with him about that relationship. You didn't tell Shane about that relationship until after he proposed to you. So, touche. You are lying. You did lie to him about that relationship. Oh, my God. You definitely lied to him, Lacey. So, you need to get your shit and you need to get out. Like, get out. Like, take this. Take that. Take this. Get out. You know, John is outside, so if I really need him, I'll just text him to come in. So then we do see her walk outside, and who's outside in the pitch black? John. I'm like, oh my god, this is ho horrific. And I, I still don't understand these two. Y'all are fighting over a woman that is playing both of y'all, literally. Like Shane. Oh, well, I wonder how did Shane feel watching last week's episode, seriously. To see that you and her daddy was outside... Fixing that trampoline for her damn kids that ain't your kids. Or, and they're neither, not, none of them are John's kids, by the way, either. And she's on camera. You like this? You like this? I'm like, no. Everything on her is fake. But, let's move on. Alright, you guys. So, this was a toss-up between who was next. But, we're gonna go ahead and just knock out Michael, Megan, Sarah and old ass Maria. Now old ass Maria had me fucked up in this episode. And I'm gonna tell you why old ass Maria had me fucked up. Because old ass Maria called um Sarah a fucking hoe. I'm like, wait a minute. Grandma. Grandma. What are you? He's married to that girl. You're sleeping with that girl's husband. What does that make you? Oh. Oh. That makes you what you just called her, right? Don't it? Because you, again, you're doing what? That's her husband, but he's your boyfriend. But again, he's still what? Her husband. So, that means you the hoe. I ain't calling you no hoe. I'm just saying that make, that would make you a hoe. Just, just, I mean, Sarah has more right to call you a hoe than you to call her a hoe. And then you're going to sit here and tell this girl she don't care about her kids. Um, Grandma... Once again, where are your grandkids at? Go take care of your grandkids. Go take care of, you know, your children. And, like, go do that. Go tend to your grandkids. Because your oldest, old-ass Maria, like I said, old-ass Maria had me fucked up. And Michael keeps telling old-ass Maria to go inside. Old-ass Maria want to continue to try to argue with Sarah. And I'm like, why are you arguing with her? If I was Sarah, I would have told old-ass Maria, girl, I just fucked your man. You know, your man came back home, came back to the uh, hotel late. You want to know why your man came back to the hotel late? Because me and your old man was fucking. I would have told old-ass Maria that. Check that. Like, old-ass Maria had me fucked up. Then you're talking about she got a lawyer. Again, Grandma, where are your grandkids? Just asking. And then the fact that this woman said, you know, she wouldn't let a nigga fool her the way he fooled Sarah got fooled by Michael. Um, once again, Grandma, <laughs> you are getting fooled by, like, Sarah. Even worse, because he lied to you. Well, no, you get, it's, it's equal. I wonder what old-ass Maria felt when she watched last week's episode, and Sarah admitted that they've had sex. And then, out of nowhere, here come black-ass, here come black Sarah. I'm like, uh-oh, there go that black scent. I wish it would go away. Because you ain't about that life, Sarah. So then, you know, the um, hotel attendant comes outside. He tells them, like, y'all got to calm down because y'all disturbing the peace. And then Michael talking about he ain't going to talk. He ain't going to have no um, no man named Bobby telling him to shut the fuck up. And I'm just like, um, well, Bobby can call 911 and have your ass arrested. Then you have a lot of Bobbies and Bubbles telling you to shut the fuck up. So which one you want to do? So then Mary's talking about, second, Sarah's talking about, get in the car, Michael. My car's right there, Michael. They're calling the cops. 
I mean, y'all doing the fool, so what do you expect? I mean, it's two seemingly white women that he's arguing with. So, yeah, they're kind of, you know, fearful for your lives. But, you know, and then Michael keeps screaming, Don't nobody touch me! Don't nobody touch me! And I'm like, calm down. Shrek. Calm down. Because you're doing the fool for no reason. So then, you know, old-ass Maria is so fucking stupid. They get in the van, and she's telling Sarah, Bye, boo-boo. We, we gonna see you in court. You have nothing to see her in court about. And I doubt Michael wants to go to court. All Sarah has to do is take the footage of this, this show with her to court to show what an unfit parent Michael is, and she would be granted full custody of those kids. Just putting that out there. But then Sarah's even dumb. She over to crying. I'm like, girl, what are you crying about? Talking about her kids this. And he choosing her over her, his kids. That's your problem, Sarah. Oh, God. I, I don't think... I, I can't say this. I don't want to say this. But this much percent of me agrees with old ass Maria. Because she is right about one thing. Sarah cares about... I'm not going to say Sarah don't care about her kids. But Sarah is more focused on chasing and behind Michael about her kids, but it's really about you and your kids, but more so about you and the fact that Michael refuses to be with you. He's with different women. That's the issue with Sarah. Oh, God, these people are draining and annoying. Let's move on, you guys, to the, 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 the crux of this episode. All right, you guys. Before we get into Angela and Tony, I just want to talk about one thing real quick. Why is everyone buying up toilet paper, paper towels, and the to paper plates, toilet paper, and tissue? What's the what's the issue with that? Like, I mean, I get by, you know, trying to stock up, but bitch, when you're hoarding shit, it's ridiculous. Like now, because this is my week to go to the grocery store. I don't have, I just ran, I'm running out of disinfectant wipes, I just realized, and none of the stores have any. Now, I get, like, why y'all buying shit in bulk? Bulk. Just buy stuff to stock up for at least a good few weeks, but to buy shit, for, okay, let's just talk about um, Tony and Angela real quick. So, it is two weeks until their, well, no, it's two days until their wedding, my bad, you guys, it's two weeks, two, two days until their wedding. So they go to the beach to meet the wedding planner, and, you know, the wedding planner is giving them the layout of what the wedding is going to look like. So, you know, they're talking about, oh, you know, this aisle right here would be for Tony's groomsmen. Tony doesn't have any groomsmen. Well, Angela, you know, I do have my be my best friend, um, Andre, that's going to come. Who is Andre? He's someone that I met in prison, so he's an ex-con, and he's someone that I don't know, Tony. That's a problem, Tony. That is a problem. Um, you know... I don't want him here, Tony, because if he's here, that means you could potentially go back to jail before the wedding. I don't want that, Tony. So what do you want to do? Um, so, you know, I was confused. I'm like, um, how is Tony going to go back to jail? What did he go to jail for, Tony? He went to jail for drugs. See, Tony, that's what I'm talking about. I don't want that, Tony. I do not want that. Okay, he can come to the wedding, but you do not talk to him before the wedding or after the wedding. Do not, Tony. Do not do that. No contact, Tony. And I was just like, uh. Angela is irrational, to say the least, because that made no sense to me. Like, he's just coming for a wedding. What are they going to do the night before that's going to put them in jail? Because most bachelor parties, I mean, they're going to go to it. They're going to do something with strip. They, if they get a hotel room, they might invite over some strippers. Or they can go to the strip club. Whatever. But what are they going to do that's going to put them in jail? I mean, granted, he sold drugs. But, I mean, he's a... Again, Angela made no sense whatsoever. So, we do see Tony and Andre heading to the club. I should have figured that Andre was black by that name, but you know, there's some, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I should have figured he was a black. So they go to the strip club, and guess who else is there to, at the strip club? Tommy. I'm like, 
Angela, you <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm, I'm like, Angela's gonna be pissed off when she finds out that Tommy and Tony and Andre are at the strip club the night before the wedding. So, you know, um, Tommy's talking to um, Tony about, you know, why Angela because she completes me, Tommy. She completes me. And he says, Well, you know, what if you like, I have a fear that you might run off on her. Why do you think I will run off? So you can be with her? No, that's not gonna happen. Um, I've, I've been able to get past my issues with the fact that you and Angela, you know, may have had something. So I've definitely let that go. Um, and then Tommy says, well, you know what? I'm not going anywhere. So then Andre comes over. He asks, well, like, what's going on? I'm trying to stop this wedding from happening. Andre was then like, oh. I'm like, um, Tommy, yeah, buddy. I would kind of tread lightly because Andre looks like he, I mean, he looks like he will fuck you up. Because he said, you know, um, and then I'm like, yeah, just look at his teeth. Because he got a grill in it. His teeth just look like they just throwing up all kind of, you know, gang signs and shit like that. So, you know, he was just like, you know, you'll get crushed. You, you will get crushed. It, it could be now or it could be later. I was like, Tony, I mean, Tommy, tread, tread lightly, brother. Tread lightly. So then, you know, some strippers come over. And I'm like, wait a minute. Because one of them strippers kind of put me in the mind of Donna from Black Ink. I'm like, when the fuck did Donna go down to Biloxi, Mississippi and become a stripper? But, you know, they take him off, you know, give him a lap dance. And Tommy the Snitch just snapping them photos, sending it to Angela. I'm like, uh-oh, Angela is going to be super duper pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Angela was pissed because she showed up to that strip club hot as hell. <laughs> oh, she was hot as fuck. <sighs> I'm trying to get together, you guys. So she come in, she's mad. <laughs> she was like, huh. I, I want to do her voice, but I'm laughing. Okay, get it together. Get it to together. Get your shit together. I'm together. Let's. I'm not in a fucking mood, Tony. Let's fucking go. I, I'm just not here to argue with you, Tony. At all, Tony. I don't know why the fuck you want to do this the night before our wedding with these goddamn strippers, Tony. Get the fuck out of here. Let's go. Get the fuck out of here. Yes, get your shit and let's get the fuck out of here. I'm just like, okay, Angela. I'm like, what did you expect? She's talking about I might not even marry this fool tomorrow. <laughs> Angela, it's a bachelor party. What did you expect them to do? Go to Chuck E. Cheese? You know, rat, um, Chuck E. Cheese. What's the other one? Dave and Buster's. What did you literally expect for them to do? Spin the bottle? Like, what did you expect for these niggas to do? What did you expect for them to do? <laughs> Get order pizza, Netflix, and chill? No. They're going to want to see strippers, ass, tits. <laughs> she expects them to do. Oh, my God. I, I'm like, Angela, you're ridiculous as fuck. What were you expecting? But, you guys, that was um, Life After Lockup. Next week is the season finale. We find out. We saw a pregnancy test at the end of it. I thought for a minute, I'm like, you know what? That might be Sarah's. But then I thought about it. Nope. That is Megan's pregnancy test because Megan, if she said, Megan said that she was pregnant by Mike, but I think she lost that baby. Hmm. I pray I never see Megan around this city ever, because her, her and her friend B, they do hang out over here in Dallas, in my area. Sometimes I pray I never run into her. I pray I never run into that dumb girl. But let's end this video. So be sure to like this video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification button so you guys know when I drop anything else, share this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one, which is going to be Sunday for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Peace out, guys.